Hello and welcome to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Thank you so much for joining us again. We'll be speaking with Dr. Christy DeSapri this morning, owner of Bone and Body Women's Health, a midlife women's health medical practice. She's joining us to talk about the need for women to understand their risk factors for osteoporosis. Osteoporosis causes more than 8 million fractures worldwide annually. 10 million U.S. adults and about one in five women over the age of 50. So it's critical they understand the disease, its risk, and how to maintain both bone strength and prevent fractures as they get older. Dr. DeSapri, let's begin with an overview of what osteoporosis is and who is most at risk. So osteoporosis is a very common condition. The folks most at risk are both men and women. So we know what when we have osteoporosis, and, and what does that mean? Osteoporosis is a condition of lower bone mineral density, weakening of the bone density and strength, which subsequently increases risk for fractures. Primarily, these are fractures uh, from a, a fall from a standing height or less, fractures of the wrist, the hip, spine, a forearm, leg, and, and sometimes spinal fractures can occur with just a twist or a bend. And the reason these fractures occur, again, is because the bone mineral density has weakened to a point where uh, the bone you know, no longer can withstand that force and, and has a fracture. Who's most at risk? Well, there are many risk factors for osteoporosis. That's why it's really important, you know, at midlife for women to take a fracture risk assessment, understand, uh, you know, their bone health. Being female, being postmenopausal, uh, whenever that is, age of menopause, uh, also genetics and uh, heredity are, are important uh, because we know that well, women with a history of a hip fracture in their family are at increased risk for fractures. Certain medications, medical history, surgical history, all of these things that might impact uh, calcium, vitamin D absorption, other rates of bone turnover or bone loss or increased risks of fracture, all can affect bone mineral density and fracture risk. And that's what we do when we assess and evaluate who's at risk. I mentioned some statistics at the beginning of our conversation. Are these statistics affected by misdiagnosis or underreporting of uh, cases of osteoporosis? So there's, there's more people impacted than we, we probably capture. But when we look at, uh, at worldwide data, 500 million individuals have osteoporosis, which translates into one fracture every three seconds. We know that women are primarily affected because at menopause we uh, go through at menopause and midlife changes we lose hormonal estrogen and that can impact the amount of bone that is lost uh, precipitously. Um, and so we know that eight million women have osteoporosis that we know of and two million men. So this is a very common condition. This is why I'm working with Amgen to raise awareness about osteoporosis. Um, many women have osteoporosis and don't know it until the first sign of osteoporosis, which is a fracture. We call that a herald fracture because that means that the bone density has weakened to a point or there's something about the bone quality or your fracture risk that makes us want to evaluate, stop, think about bone density. And the reason we do that is that osteoporosis-related fractures uh, beca- can occur again. In fact, 20% of women who sustain one fracture will have another fracture within five years. And the rate of another fracture can be highest within the, the following uh, one to two years after. So this is a time where we want to capture the fracture, really understand and take some urgency around understanding why this occurred, evaluate this, and then proceed to treatment. And that can be a variety of different things from uh, FDA-approved medications uh, to, to you know, uh, nutritional and, and exercise recommendations as well. With any condition, there are bound to be some misconceptions and myths. Do you think you could let us in on some of these misconceptions that leave women at risk? There are many misconceptions. I think I touched on one that osteoporosis is a silent condition. Uh, we know that once you've had a fracture, uh, the, of a fracture from a fall from a standing height or a low trauma fracture, that di- that is and makes the diagnosis of osteoporosis. I share that with my patients in my clinical practice every day. Another misconception for women is that, you know, osteoporosis is in- inevitable. You know, we talk a lot about cancer risk screenings and cardiovascular risk assessment, all very important to reduce the risks of, of those conditions, but osteoporosis is generally, you know, forgotten. But we know that the, the bone in our skeleton is very important. It's what uh, keeps us upright um, and, and keeps us functioning and, and is very important. And when we have those osteoporosis-related fractures or sustain one or multiple of those fractures, 
it really has an impact on many things. It has an impact on life, a quality of life. Um, it can, they can cause pain, uh, problems with a mobility or walking, affect how we live uh, independently, work independently, and even affect lifespan. So I think, um, you know, there's a misconception that osteoporosis and fractures are inevitable. We're going to all shrink or fracture, but the reality is that does not need to be. And at midlife and beyond, we really can take a lot of, you know, proactive steps to, you know, reduce the risk of fractures uh, and, and think about bone health in a more, you know, preventative and positive light. When it comes to prevention, uh, how can women reduce the risk of falls and fractures? There are many things. So falls and fractures are intimately, um, you know, intertwined. It's really important to look at, you know, comprehensive bone health from both reduction of fractures and attempts to reduce the risk of falls. So really doing that with a, a healthcare provider who is uh, who is experienced is very important. And so for postmenopausal women, particularly with osteoporosis and received a diagnosis of osteoporosis who may be at risk, as I've discussed here today, and want to take a more proactive approach. Um, there are various resources I recommend. One of them is a website, understandop.com. And there you can find information about treatment options, how to discuss osteoporosis, uh, benefit and risk of treatment options uh, with your healthcare provider, and just general information on osteoporosis, some of which we've touched on today. And if you would, doctor, give us that website once again so that uh, none of our listeners miss it. Sure. So the website is understand. OP.com. Thank you, Dr. DeSapri, for your time. I'm hoping that you'll come back and uh, give us some more information about osteoporosis as diagnosis and treatments progress. Thank you. Thanks for highlighting the topic. Bye-bye. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard, in conversation with Dr. Christy DeSapri. Audio copies of this program are available at healthprofessionalradio.com.au, also at Anchor Spotify, and be sure and subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com, Health Professional Radio. Thank you.